About a year ago, we made quite an extensive test of vodkas with Magda for the wedding. And we came to the conclusion that this one will be on our tables, but we've just got vetoed by my in-laws because they said that they don't agree with the choice. So, um, so this. We came to a conclusion, but because we're all so tired and drunk, apparently we have to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not making this up, but this came on to us. <sighs> but if anyone else has a better suggestion on how to pump alcohol out of your body first thing in the morning, I'm open to suggestions. <sighs> Kielce, the city we're in right now is a pretty insignificant city when it comes to Polish history. There's, um, well, this guy used to live here, um, nearby, and he won the Nobel Prize for literature. But other than that, let me put it this way. If you haven't visited Poland yet and you want to, you can easily skip this one. Don't get me wrong, it's still a nice city, there's just not much to do here. And while it may be pretty insignificant for Polish history, it's quite significant for this very short period of history that it's called my life. And in order for it all to make sense, I have to go a few years back. About 10 or 12 years ago I wanted to go studying um, film directing to Łódź in Poland, which is one of the best academies for filmmaking. Um, and in order to do that, um, I went studying Polish language in Ljubljana, Slovenia, so you know, I could learn some, I, I could know the language and I had a degree before I went studying film. But um, after a year I realized that Polish language is really not my thing, it's way too difficult, I'm not enjoying it and because I told myself that I'll never make it to the academy, I dropped out. So I got a full-time job, I rented a two-bedroom apartment and I pretty much did everything a responsible grown-up would do, uh, but somehow, I don't know, the whole time deep down I felt that this just, it just kind of didn't work for me. I wasn't, I was never satisfied and, and I started realizing more and more that, you know, if I would continue like this, I would be less and less happy. And I would have to do something, you know, in order to change it, logically. And I was working for the TV and, and working on live television. Shifts are usually quite long. You work for 10, sometimes 12 hours and you come home and you're beat up and you don't really have the time to do anything else. So at the end of the day, you're basically know just what you are doing. So I knew how to video edit and that was all my skill set. So changing my career at that point was, seemed at least kind of impossible. So come one September I gave myself exactly one year to find something else to do with my life, to either find another job or start you know, searching for other hobbies so I could slowly start changing my careers. And it was it wasn't until next June, I still didn't have anything, and then in July, a friend of mine sent me an email with EVS. And I'm gonna talk about this a bit later, but um, what I, I had no ideas of what it was. I just read from it really quickly that it gave me an opportunity to travel to another country and live there for up to a year, um, not having to spend any money so I will live on someone else's expenses and basically have one year to just think about what I want to do with my life 
So I applied and by the end of July I got the, the answer that I'm accepted and it was the same afternoon that I gave in my resignation and 1st September I started volunteering for a non-governmental organization here in Kielce. By the way, EVS or any organization is not paying me anything to talk about it. I just think that EVS is probably one of the best things that the European Union came up for youth. So what is EVS? EVS is short for European Voluntary Service and what it does is it offers young adults between 17 and 30 years old. Mind you, I was 29 then, so I literally caught it, you know, by the last hair. So it offers these young people to go to another country for up to a year, to live there on the expenses of the European Union, so you get provided food and lodging, and um, a very small pocket money, and by very small I mean cheapest vodka and beer small, and work for a non-governmental organization, and um, basically gives you a chance to think about yourself or your future or what you want to do. Before this behind me became what it very obviously states it is, it used to be a, a bar, a club, and they had regular karaoke nights. And it was here that me and my friend won the first award for karaoke, which was a bottle of vodka. Beat that. So here I was living behind my two-bedroom rented apartment, uh, my full-time job where I, where I was the head of the department, uh, and all my friends coming here, sharing an apartment with two women, having pocket money where I had to literally count the coins uh, to see if I was able to buy an extra beer or not. But luckily, beer here is dirt cheap, I think. By the time it was like half a pound for a bottle of beer or something like that. And um, being told by people who were 95% younger than me and, and less experienced uh, what to do, so being ordered around, which was really frustrating from the beginning. And mind you, my Polish language by that time was, let's just say I was able to order a beer and um, curse a bit. And that's what EVS is really good for. It basically kicks you directly in the nuts and makes you reassemble yourself. You have workshops where you spend a week just talking about your life goals, about what you want to do, about things that you can do and um, things that are most important to you in your life. And I guess most importantly, you get to do this with people who are in the exact same point in their lives as you are. And it was here that I met the guy that uh, just earlier this year composed the music for my film and it was here that I met my future wife and you just meet so many people that also inspire you and just show you how many things you are able to do and it was here that I learned two most important lessons of my life at that time First thing is, there's a lot of things in our lives that we can do and aren't really aware of. My project here was going around schools and talk to children between, I think, 8 and 15 or 16 years old and A, talk about my country and B, talk about volunteering. And I realized that I'm actually really good with uh, working with children, which I didn't know before that. And then on one of the workshops, we were talking about our hobbies and things we liked, and I mentioned that I like photography. And so the, the host or the leader of the workshop asked me to really quickly come up with a half an hour workshop about photography. So I did, and that resulted in me having full day workshops of photography and eventually giving a lecture on photography at the local university, which came as a bit of a surprise, but you know, I was able to do it. And the second and probably the most important lesson that I've learned here uh, and the word for it I found a few years later when I was reading this book called Mastery I'll leave the link or something in the description It's called Shoshin Shoshin is Japanese for beginner's mind And what it means is that whatever you are approaching in life be it work or a challenge or experience or whatever it is always approach it as a beginner 
regardless to what your skills are about that are, what your knowledge is or experience, always approach it as if it's a completely new thing, as if you knew nothing about it. Leave your ego and everything out of it and keep your mind completely open. And it just makes such a huge difference. Remember when I said that I was being told by people that were younger and less experienced by me of what I had to do? Well, that's kind of the same thing. And I think I'm gonna stop here because I could probably make a few episodes just talking about this. And while when finishing the project in Kielce and moving to London, my life didn't change overnight. Um, and I'm still, you know, curving my way to the, to the goal. Um, it most definitely did start here. And I think the first domino was flipped right here. So Kielce, thank you. Was that too cheesy? Should I just, I'll just leave it on. So Kielce, thank you. <laughs>